On the one hand, developers should always check any other code that their own code is calling. However, it is possible that in certain situations, like when time constraints or exhaustion result in lack of concentration, a developer may overlook a single line of code. This is even more likely if the developer has to jump around inside a large file while mentally keeping track of the function call hierarchy and committing the state of smart contract variables to memory. Let's look at the preceding example in a bit more depth. Imagine that a developer is writing a public function called A. The developer is new to this contract and is utilizing a modifier written by someone else. At a glance, it appears that the stage time confirmation modifier is simply performing some checks regarding the age of the contract in relation to the calling function. What the developer may not realize is that the modifier is also calling another function, next stage, in this simplistic demonstration scenario. Simply calling the public function A results in the smart contract stage variable moving from safe stage to danger stage. Viper has done away with modifiers altogether. The recommendations from Viper are as follows. If only performing assertions with modifiers, then simply use inline checks and asserts as part of the function. If modifying smart contract state and so forth, again make these changes explicitly part of the function. Doing this improves auditability and readability, as the reader doesn't have to mentally wrap the modifier code around the function to see what it does. Class inheritance. Inheritance allows programmers to harness the power of pre-written code by acquiring pre-existing functionality, properties, and behaviors from existing software libraries. Inheritance is powerful and promotes the reuse of code. Solidity supports multiple inheritance as well as polymorphisms. But while these are key features of object-oriented programming, Viper does not support them. Viper maintains that the implementation of inheritance requires coders and auditors to jump between multiple files in order to understand what the program is doing. Viper also takes the view that multiple inheritance can make code too complicated to understand, a view tacitly admitted by the Solidity documentation, which gives an example of how multiple inheritance can be problematic. Inline assembly Inline assembly gives developers low-level access to the Ethereum virtual machine, allowing Solidity programs to perform operations by directly accessing EVM instructions. For example, the following inline assembly code adds 3 to memory location 0x80. 3 0x80 m load add 0x80 m store. Viper considers the loss of readability to be too high a price to pay for the extra power, and thus does not support inline assembly. Function overloading. Function overloading allows developers to write multiple functions of the same name. Which function is used on a given occasion depends on the types of the arguments supplied. Take the following two functions, for example. Function f with one parameter, uint underscore in, public, pure, returns uint out, open brace, out equals one, close brace. Function f with two parameters, uint underscore in, bytes 32 underscore key, public, pure, returns uint out, open brace, out equals two, close brace. The first function accepts an input argument of type uint. The second function accepts two arguments, one of type uint and one of type bytes32. Having multiple function definitions with the same name taking different arguments can be confusing, so Viper does not support function overloading. Variable typecasting. There are two sorts of typecasting, implicit and explicit. Implicit typecasting is often performed at compile time. For example, if a type conversion is semantically sound, and no information is likely to be lost. The compiler can perform an implicit conversion, such as converting a variable of type uint8 to uint16. The earliest versions of Viper allowed implicit typecasting of variables, but recent versions do not. Explicit typecasts can be inserted in Solidity. Unfortunately, they can lead to unexpected behavior. For example, 
Casting a uns32 to the smaller type uns16 simply removes the higher order bits as demonstrated here. uns32a equals 0x12345678. uns16b equals uns16 of a. Code comment. Variable b is 0x5678 now. Viper instead has a convert function to perform explicit casts. The convert function found on line 82 of convert.py. Define converts with two parameters, expression and context. Output type equals expression.arcs first item dot s. If output type in conversion table, return conversion tables value with key output type called with the two arguments, expression and context. Else, race exception. Conversion to the provided argument is invalid, dot format, output type. Note the use of conversion table found on line 90 of the same file, which looks like this. Conversion table equals open brace, int 128, colon, to underscore int 128, dot dot dot, bytes 32, colon, to bytes 32, close brace. When a developer calls convert, it references conversion table, which ensures that the appropriate conversion is performed. For example, if a developer passes an int 128 to the convert function, the to int 128 function on line 26 of the same converts.py file will be executed. As you can see, the conversion process ensures that no information can be lost. If it could be, an exception is raised. The conversion code prevents truncation as well as other anomalies that would ordinarily be allowed by implicit typecasting. Choosing explicit over implicit typecasting means that the developer is responsible for performing all casts. While this approach does produce more verbose code, it also improves the safety and auditability of smart contracts. Preconditions and postconditions. Viper handles preconditions, postconditions, and state changes explicitly. While this produces redundant code, it also allows for maximum readability and safety. When writing a smart contract in Viper, a developer should observe the following three points. One, condition. What is the current state slash condition of the Ethereum state variables? Two, effects. What effects will this smart contract code have on the condition of the state variables upon execution? That is, what will be affected and what will not be affected? Are these effects congruent with the smart contract's intentions? 3. Interaction After the first two considerations have been exhaustively dealt with, it is time to run the code. Before deployment, logically step through the code and consider all of the possible permanent outcomes consequences and scenarios of executing the code, including interactions with other contracts. Ideally, each of these points should be carefully considered and then thoroughly documented in the code. Doing so will improve the design of the code, ultimately making it more readable and auditable. Decorators. The following decorators may be used at the start of each function. 1. At private. The at private decorator makes the function inaccessible from outside the contract. 2. At public. The at public decorator makes the function both visible and executable publicly. For example, even the Ethereum wallet will display such functions when viewing the contract. 3. At constant. Functions with the at constant decorator are not allowed to change state variables. In fact, the compiler will reject the entire program with an appropriate error if the function tries to change a state variable. 4. At payable. Only functions with the at payable decorator are allowed to transfer value. Viper implements the logic of decorators explicitly. For example, the Viper compilation process will fail if a function has both a at payable decorator and a at constant decorator. This makes sense because a function that transfers value has by definition updated the state, so cannot be at constant. Each Viper function must be decorated with either at public or at private, but not both.